evolutionists maintain that our Earth isn't a closed system at all, that it is open to the sun's energy, and that the energy of the sun's rays, for instance, created the life on our beautiful planet. But is energy enough, even when you have an open system? There are a number of problems with the theory of evolution, particularly from the point of view of thermodynamics. The laws of thermodynamics are three. The second law is that the amount of work available uh, for useful work in a closed system decreases. Another way of saying that is that the order or organization of matter in a closed system goes down. It descends into chaos. Now, there are exceptions, and these exceptions confuse. If you take, say, something dead, like a stick that formerly was growing and using the sun's energy to increase its order, but it's now dead. Now, if I expose that stick in to, to sunlight in, a open, in an open system, this stick will get warm. In fact, it's quite warm now because the sun is quite strong. Now, that means that its organization is decreasing. Its entropy is increasing. Now, that's in an open system. Why doesn't its organization increase? It should do, according to the law of evolution, the, the postulates of evolution. If I take, on the other hand, not a dead stick, but something that's living, like this nice little orchid here, early spotted uh, orchid, uh, that orchid is absorbing sun's energy just as this stick is absorbing the sun's energy. But the energy that falls on that from the sun is by coupled reactions being used to increase the order and to grow. Um, the chlorophyll does that. But if I kill this orchid, if I would pick it and let it die, the energy of the sun would fall on it, and then it would get hotter and therefore more disorganized. What's the difference then between the stick, which is dead, and the orchid, which is alive? The difference is that the orchid has active what the scientists call teleonomy in it. It's a machine which is capturing energy to increase order. This machine is dead and is not capturing energy to reduce uh, disorder and to increase order. There's the difference. Where did the teleonomy come from? The teleonomy, the ordering principle, does not reside in matter itself, but it does reside in life. And where you have life, you have teleonomy, and then the sun's energy can be taken and make the thing grow, that is, increase its order. I, as a scientist, must therefore postulate a source of information to supply the teleonomy or know-how. I don't find it in this universe, and therefore I assume that it's transcendent to this universe, and I believe myself in a living God who did it. I believe that this God who supplied the information revealed himself in the form of a man so that man could understand him. We're made to understand. We're homo sapiens. And if God made us to understand, I want to understand. And I want to understand God. But I can only do it if he comes down to my wavelength which is the wavelength of man. And therefore, I believe that God uh, revealed himself in the form of Christ and that we can serve him and know him in our hearts as the source of the Logos, all information necessary to make the universe and to make life itself. <laughs>